With the multiple rumors and speculations swirling around in the air about 2021 bringing us the return to Sinnoh region, I thought today we would talk about some features that would be super useful to have in the Diamond and Pearl remakes. So in this video, we'll specifically look at features that didn't exist in Diamond and Pearl back in the day that we want to see actually show up. And now if we hit 800 likes on this video, so yes, 800, we'll do also do a video on features that we want to see return from Diamond and Pearl in the remakes. But yeah, today we're looking at those features that never existed back in the day in Diamond and Pearl and that we need in the upcoming remakes. Let's get started. First up has to be following Pokemon. This is a feature that was introduced in Yellow, but that was more present in Heart Gold and Soul Silver back in the day, as those games made the feature a lot larger. And then we saw the feature reappear later on in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. And most recently, we saw the feature in the Pokemon Isle of Armor DLC in Pokemon Sword and Shield, where the feature was somewhat poorly programmed though. But either way, following Pokemon are a feature that never existed in the original Pokemon Diamond and Pokemon Pearl. But I think, it would have made the whole experience of those games I mean, multiple times more exciting. The joy of having your Pokemon visible in the overworld is something that simply increases your connection with that Pokemon and makes your journey with that specific Pokemon feel a lot more personal. And to be fair, they've clearly shown that this is not no more a exclusive feature to those previous games, and they can easily add this into the remakes without giving any excuses as to why, you know, they won't add it, like for example, that it didn't exist in the past, because that feature, you know, now is available in other places, so they can definitely do it in the upcoming remakes as well, or future remakes rather. Next on the features that we would need is hands down the mounting Pokemon feature from Sun and Moon and Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee. Now the version of this feature in Sun and Moon isn't as good as the one in Let's Go. See, in Sun and Moon, you have to be limited to a specific set of Pokemon you can use that are mostly used as kind of like HM Pokemon, so to say, whenever you mount them and whenever they're mountable. And you're also, while mountable, right, you're also forced to wear a stupid uniform when riding them, which is kind of dumb in my opinion. Now, the same way you are forced to wear the super uniform, you do that also when riding the bike in Sword and Shield. But in Pokemon Let's Go, that is different because there you have the ability to simply mount different Pokemon and that's pretty much it, right? Like as long as they're large enough to be mounted, you can do that and you can keep your existing clothings on you, right? You don't need to change in some weird goofy outfit. And if they introduce the exact same mount feature from Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee into Diamond and Pearl remakes, I think that the Diamond and Pearl remakes could be fantastic as this feature is one of the most immersive things ever. And it simply just made the experience of playing Let's Go a lot better. Like it made it about a hundred times more fun because you got to feel this like really cool enjoyment of being able to like, hey, literally like ride around on the back of like your freaking, you know, Snorlax or whatever. It, it just made everything a little bit cooler, right? So that's why I think this feature definitely is one that should show up once again in the future remakes. Seasons. So yeah, I am one of those people, but for real. Like, the seasons, I think, need to exist in the remakes. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, if you look back at Pokemon Black and White, you might recall that those games specifically had an in-game season that would change depending on the actual season, right? It would make the actual environment change and cause a you know, certain set of new Pokemon to appear. And we do have something similar in Sword and Shield with like the weather causing different Pokemon to appear, but it's not the same as what I'm thinking of. And now, what I'm talking about is more about this, right? Now, imagine that you go inside of the game and if the seasons, you know, let's say winter or summer or whatever, and you head up to like snow point and on your way, you know, during the season of summer, a lot of the snow that might have been there in snow point might have melted, making the path towards the city itself a lot easier to get to. But then on the other hand, though, on the winter times, some other areas of Sinnoh, which are usually warmer, would actually now be more cold and there will, you know, be more snow there, making it harder to traverse it, right? Like, I think that would make for a really cool feature because it would allow for different areas to work in different ways depending on what time you're playing the game, making the whole experience different, right? So if you replay it during the summer or during the winter, it would change your whole experience and how it feels to, you know, actually play it. Now, the reason why I think this may be one of those features that is less likely to actually happen and the reason why I think, you know, Game Freak probably won't do this is because it's probably going to require a lot of time and effort to make the different seasons and weathers work in the whole region, right? But, you know, this is why I think they won't do this but why it's a feature I really want to see. So, hey, we can always dream, right? We can always dream and hope they could do this, but let's be fair, because of the fact that we know Game Freak doesn't want to put too much effort into these, you know, these sort of things, it's unlikely we'll ever see this feature show up again. 
Next is the PSS. Honestly, the PSS needs to come back and it's seriously the most stable and best iteration of an online interactive version of a UI we've ever had. Now, comparing it to the horrible, I mean really horrible Wycom uh, within Sword and Shield, it's like no competition. The Wycom is laggy and constantly happens to be struggling, you know, it's a struggle rather to use this feature, right? It's a struggle to use it. And it's not super clear about anything, it makes everything a bit harder to handle. And overall, just the online features for Sword and Shield are a bit atrocious. However, the PSS worked pretty solidly back in the, you know, generation six. So it only makes sense to me that this would return, you know, and they would return something like this, similar to this, you know, to the PSS that they would spend more time on making and making it far more stable in terms of what it can do and all that sort of stuff that would return in Diamond and Pearl Remake. Now, it didn't really exist back in those games, but it did exist, you know, in Generation 6, so I don't see why you wouldn't bring something like that back as it was a really useful feature that worked well, right? Like, that's the difference, right? It actually worked well. It was a decent feature that worked really well, and I find that, hey, it's the perfect and ample opportunity to see it return. Mega Evolutions are the next feature. So yeah, this this is the least likely one to happen, hence why it's, you know, further down on this list. But I've always found that Mega Evolution was a fantastic, and I really mean fantastic feature when I say it. But ever since Omega Ruby and Pokemon Alpha Sapphire, we haven't really seen a single new Mega Evolution added, and instead just a bunch of other features that to me just don't achieve the same level of hype and excitement that Mega Evolutions brought. Hence why I feel like we could really use a return back to them, right? So a few years back during Sun and Moon's release, we got to learn that Mega Evolutions wouldn't show up, you know, within future games, but we were told though by Game Freak and Masuda that Mega Evolutions were a feature that they were thinking about returning sometime in the future, right? Sometime in the future, if it fits with the game, they would return it, right? And I think this is the ample opportunity to see that happen, right? I think this is the perfect time to have Mega Evolutions return because... It makes sense, right? So let's just look at what we have. So we've got Dynamaxing, Gigantamaxing, we've got Z-Moves. Now, Z-Moves are only for Alola, and it makes sense that Z-Moves would stay within Alola, right? Like, it's a good area for, you know, them to remain. But then we look at specifically Gigantamaxing and Dynamaxing. We were told by them that that's a feature that's gonna be only within Galar, right? Gigantamaxing and Dynamaxing, that's a feature specifically for the Galar region, right? Which would imply then that that feature wouldn't make any sense to show up in Diamond and Pearl or in Sinnoh or in any other region because it's very specific to that of Galar. So it only makes sense to me then, right? Like, think about it logically. Doesn't it only make sense then that they would introduce Mega Evolutions back as it's a feature that they did say was going to return at some point in the future and that makes more sense with this area? Because think about it, right? Di I mean, Diamond and Pearl, Sinnoh itself, is very much connected to the first original two Pokemon, you know, regions and generations, right? If you look back, it's specifically Kanto and Johto, right? Which are the ones that do have, like, you know, I guess Kanto more or less has the most amount of Megas. So it's an area where Mega Evolution does exist, doesn't it make sense then that one of the closer regions, which is Sinnoh, because it's clearly within vicinity of Kanto, would also, you know, have Mega Evolution showing up and being a thing there? It just makes sense to me that that would be a feature. But on top of that also, Mega Evolutions is something that allows them to make more merchandise much easier. With, with you know, Gigantamax is a little bit harder because of the whole, like, you know, red smoke and stuff, making it a little bit more difficult of a way to introduce those. But with Megas, it's slightly different because there's an easier way to do that, right? You don't need to kind of make a giant Pokemon, etc, etc, but instead you can simply just make a brand new model for like a Pokemon, like let's take the for example, Sinnoh starter Pokemon. You simply take them and then just give them Mega Evolutions and there you go, you've made so many people happy now and, you know, that's it there you go, you've literally done your job, you don't need to do much else than that, you just need to make the animations for them the same way you make the animations for the Gigantamax Pokemon, but honestly, in a smaller scale, so I feel like this could definitely work. I feel like this is definitely doable, and I think Mega Evolutions have the ample opportunity to return now as, again, they've been gone for a while now, and I think it's a feature that allows them also to introduce more new evolutions for certain Pokemon that didn't already have enough attention on them, so definitely give some love to, you know, unappreciated Pokemon, but also, on top of that, this allows us to have a feature back that was pretty awesome. 
And so that is the end of the video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, then make sure to drop a like down below and subscribe for future videos. And of course, guys, if we hit 800 likes on this video, you can expect to see a, you know, another video about the features, but this time about features that need to return, right? So returning features we need to see for Diamond and Pearl remakes. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Rafa Rallet. Have yourselves a great day and bye-bye, ladies and gentlemen.